Now, I think most people, both of you are looking for sponsored jobs. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Perfect. So the first thing is application in the UK job market. Um, click, click. So um, the most important thing is to know the market. The reason why most international students fail, when I first started in 2013, I didn't really know anything about international students and like it was super weird. I didn't get it because I'm, I'm a Brit. Um, so this is about know the market, verify demand, make a plan, populate the plan, create a repeatable system, execute and maintain pipeline and resources to use. I view finding a job very much like a sales process. So I don't view it like it's like, oh, I'm, you know, it's because people don't like me. It's a repeatable sales process that you can go through over and over again. So first of all, um, in June 20, 2022, there were like 46,000 work sponsors. It doesn't deviate that much. Um, there's roughly about 30 to 32,000 work sponsors, but they're probably at any given moment, there's like less than a thousand companies that are a decent shot. They're decent hitters. So if you know the market, you know that many of those companies are too small or they've just been fitted up to take on a family member, that type of thing. This is what I mean by knowing the market. Um, if you haven't already, we have a free site. It's called SponsorTier2.com. It sends updates uh, every week. It enables you to easily sift and sort. You can also, um, I'll show it to you guys. This is why we're here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, so this is completely free. I think it's, so you can just sort by like asset management, then you find out how many companies there are, there are 340 companies, and then you can just download your search, right? So I wanted to make it the process as easy as possible because systematically, I believe that what people are doing, what the British government does is super unhelpful. Having said that, it's probably more helpful than other governments. So it's not, it's not one to kind of complain about or anything, but that's just knowing the market. Um, the government, but on the government website, you can search for your ideal job role and find your expected salary. Um, this is something which is called uh, SOP code. So I'm just gonna do stuff with you. So SOP codes, UK government. So SOP codes are skilled worker visas. Now each of these, you have all these different um, types of codes. So say you wanted to do marketing. So you'd be like, well, probably not gonna be a sales director, could be an associate or a professional. Um, but then you want to find the relevant salary that you need to get paid. So salary. So then you can find that here. Why is this important? To, to understand whether you're finding a job which is going to pay you enough, right? So some of these are, if the job is paying you, say you wanted to be a marketing associate, right? And they're paying you under 20, 23,600 pounds. It's no good to you, right? So this is very much about knowing the market and making a plan before you set off on your destination. You can get as granular as possible as you like, but a lot of this is not about doing more. It's about not wasting time, which is super crucial because no one teaches this. Universities are, I probably shouldn't swear, but they're not helpful, right? Um, they could, don't kind of point this out. So make sure you find the minimum salary expectations so that you do not get underpaid and you can make sure you will be sponsored for the role because employers don't know that's the thing that kind of makes it even more maddening they're like oh you need sponsorship yeah that's fine i'll give you a job and then like then you're like oh do you pay me will you pay me twenty five thousand a year and they're like oh hell no they're like okay this is no good to me next right whatever that is you can uh use that stuff um when i get to the end and do a bit of q a i'll save all of those links and i'll just pop them for on the chat um, here's an example, right? So let's take a healthcare role in the medical industry. So you would go to sponsor tier two and you would turn around and say, right, I want to work in healthcare. I probably get uh, 30 emails a week about people who want to work in healthcare. So you turn around and go, right, I want to work in a care hub, right? And I want to work in London. So you now you only have 115 potential employers. One of the biggest problems that you have as an international student is choice and not understanding what choice is best, right? So all of a sudden you've just shortened your list. You could literally download that list and start piling through that list. Whatever, it could be the same for um, asset management and you're like, I wanna do asset management in Birmingham, right? There's one company. So you're gonna to have to go a little bit wider. Um, and then you could turn around and say, right, so I wanna work in asset management, it doesn't pop up. So what about finance? Finance and investment analysts and advisors, I need to be getting paid 28,600 pounds a month, right? 
And if you want, when we um, have a little break before we move on to the next module, we can deal with the roles that you're applying for uh, and just have a quick look at that. But you get the idea, right? So um, you know how many companies you can apply to, how much you should be getting paid and who those companies are. Done. So you're not sitting there on LinkedIn and Indeed trying to figure out, should I apply to this job? Should I do this? Should I do that? That's a massive headache removed already. Tick. Um, verifying demand, we talk about what do you want versus what is there? So um, I get people all the time, they're like, I want to be a librarian. I want to be a butcher. I want to be an um, agricultural worker. I'm just like, that's great, but that doesn't pay enough. And there aren't enough companies who want to employ you to do that. The reason why we try to uh, target bigger companies is they've just got more roles. There's just more supply. So bigger companies are going to have more roles open as they employ more staff. PwC, a thousand roles. Deloitte, a thousand roles. Goldman Sachs, small companies. Now these companies aren't small, but these are things that you'll learn. Like L'Oreal is very popular with a certain tranche of women who I deal with. They're like, I want to work for L'Oreal. And I'm like, great, I have 12 graduate roles a year. So it doesn't matter how good you are, you're literally going to be competing against 5,000 people who are very similar to you. This isn't about you being better or worse, but the supply is so small, right? Um, here's another example. You know, you want to be a biomedical engineer working in a research lab for GSK, AstraZeneca or Pfizer. There are only 10 open roles in the whole country. So is that, that does that mean that you can't get the job? No, it just makes it harder. It's just maths, it's just data. Um, is there an actual demand for the job that you want to do, i.e. 50 plus open vacancies? Here's an example. If you go to Indeed and you went, you literally, this is what I mean by just verifying demand. So you went biomedical engineer in the United Kingdom, find jobs. We'll do this a little bit later. So it's got to be posted by an employer because recruiters are just nightmares. And what about, I'll explain my logic a little bit later. So in the last seven days, there's seven jobs. There is not a high supply of these these jobs right and again this is not my opinion this is me just using basic data basic assumptions verifying that hypothesis and going yeah i wouldn't do that it's going to be super hard for you um cool graduate roles um a lot of people get confused with graduate roles so they'll say like oh i can't be um i can't go and do audit finance operations whatever which are the uk is a service is a service driven economy which predominantly revolves around finance and professional services and banking as a as an international finance hub right so if you don't want, want to work in, in or around finance that's absolutely fine but you're going to be cutting off a lot of potential supply of jobs most jobs you can have a, you just need a 2-1 degree in any discipline a lot of jobs now more and more they don't need a 2-1 at all, right? So don't assume that because you did an undergraduate degree in journalism, you have to go and work in journalism. Again, a lot of the times I really just smash assumptions that people have made based upon false information or someone else's opinion. Um, where to find graduate roles? Easy. Indeed, Bright Network, Times Top 100. Um, employees, employers, oh, they made a spelling mistake there. Um, I'll show you how to do this. We don't apply through Indeed. We don't apply through Bright Network. We don't apply through five third parties. We just use that to verify the vacancies. Um, I'll send you, by the way, I'll send you this PowerPoint afterwards as a PDF. So don't worry, you don't have to like, because I just like to talk. Um, making an application plan. This is really important. This is where a lot of people go wrong. Tracking is so important. Um, over the years, I've worked with just bizarrely, like world-class athletes, right? And um, what they'll do is, is that they track stuff. They'll track their workouts, their movements, what they're doing. Um, and I'll show you this. So with our clients, they have to track stuff. So this is a, a typical client page. They will track all their applications position, the date they applied, the stage that they got to, the documents that they've had, um, the vacancy URL, the notes. You can do this in a basic um, Google Sheet, Excel, whatever. It doesn't have to be on Notion. It doesn't have to look sexy. But what I would say to you is, is um, you might think, oh, I can remember. That's just a lie. You can't, right? You've got too much going on. Short-term working memory, three to five items, and you're just gonna forget. So just track what you're doing. Why is this important? There's a couple of things. Number one, you can follow stuff up. I haven't heard from them in a week. Cool, send them an email. You can track, does this CV work? Is my cover letter working? 
oh, I got an online test. Why is that? So you can start to accumulate data based upon what is successful and what is unsuccessful. Most people will get frustrated and, they'll, and then I'll say, what do you think the problem is based upon your applications? The like, guy, oh, I don't know because I haven't tracked it. Again, when you think about it, this is one of the most important things that you'll do in your entire life. And people are so lazy or just undisciplined in the way that they approach it. It is difficult, but you can make your life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, Peter Drucker, what gets man what gets measured gets managed. Um, so we've got a free application guide and template. If you want it, just let me know uh, and I'll pop through the link at the end. Um, populating the plan. So when you, if you haven't started or you're just in the early days of getting started, um, I recommend that you find 50 or more companies to apply for. Why 50? That seems insane. Because most people can do five, 10, 20. Once you get to 20, then your brain really starts to work. You're like, who do I really want to work for? Um, what is it that I want to do? Like, I'm not really sure. Um, the reason you expand beyond your comfort zone. So this whole process takes one afternoon, but it will set you up for the rest of your applications um, as far forward as possible. I'll show you an example of this from, um, let me see, who's finished? Uh, who was pretty good at Let's see what they <laughs> So just something like this, right? This just gives you an example. Um, he recorded it all, he's applied, what stage he was at, CV, cover letter. I mean, he only did 14 here. Um, it's just so much easier and it's so much less stressful because you're not sitting there trying to think about what you've got to do. The other thing to think about with a plan is, when you sit down and you find the time to apply, you're not trying to figure out what you should do. You've already got the plan. So you just sit down and go, ah, oh, I need to apply for Aeon, sweet, off you go, right? So you're minimizing friction and you're maximizing efficiency, which is really important if you have loads of stuff going on in your life, because we're not just sitting there with nothing else to do apart from finding a job, right? Um, that's just kind of an example. So 50 plus companies to apply for, um, you sponsor TrueTrue.com, so make sure you include the role you're applying for in the plan. People will be like, I want to apply for Deloitte. I'm like, great, Deloitte's got like 300 different job roles in the UK. What do you want to do? So you can go and check that out and see what you like and what you don't like. Do they sponsor? Um, is there a deadline? Is it recent? You know, if you've got, a, when you have um, a vacancy list on your application form, it just means that whenever you come back to that process, you can just go, right, what's next? Do I need to follow up any of my applications? What's outstanding? Have I received a rejection? You know, all of those things. This is basic stuff, but again, people don't do it. Um, create a repeatable system. Um, a lot of what I've done based over the years, and the reason why I have created a certain element of success is repeatable systems and um, the reason why I like systems over habits is because people forget stuff so I like um, diarization I like effectiveness and I like efficiency how many applications do you do a week do the minimum don't do the maximum why because if you do the maximum you can stress yourself out you're gonna raise your cortisol levels and then you won't wanna do it anymore. So like what's easy for you? Two applications a week. How much time do you genuinely have? You know, and don't try and get really, I tend to attract um, highly efficient, almost OCD level performers. Um, and they'll be like, oh, I could do like, four hours a day and I just say to them, you're lying, you're gonna burn out. If you wanna do Netflix and chill, or you wanna sit upside down on your bed and play Candy Crush, that's cool. But like you've got to have time to decompress. And when do you have free time? Genuinely, like when do you feel you can sit down and think, oh, I feel all right about doing this, not I feel like it's horrible. And how long does it take to do an application? Some people take an hour to do a form. Some people take four hours to write a cover letter, right? With stuff like ChatGPT, Google Bard, all that stuff out there, we try and maximize the use of AI this year. Uh, and we have done really for about two years. Um, I'll show you some bits and pieces with that as well, which will make your life a lot easier. Um, pick a time and a day to complete your applications and then just systematize it, right? And try and make it in a way so it's easy, it's enjoyable, uh, have a reward at the end. You know, um, I'm not going to go too much into habit formation. You can just go and read uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear, right? Or something like that. Or Charles Duhigg, or look, I'm not here to give like a productivity and efficiency class. I'm just here to demonstrate a really clearly repeatable system. Um, the other thing is create a document for repeatable answers. You get asked the same stuff over and over again in your application form. 
Just have it in a document. Name, address, educational records, work experience, blah, blah, blah. Minimize friction, right? You just have a Google Doc somewhere. Again, people don't do this. And I'm like, why are you doing this? Why are you typing in the same address 20 times? No wonder you hate yourself and you want to jump out of a window. Like, just make it easy for yourself. And this all comes from really effective planning. Because if it's easy, you'll do it. If it's hard, you won't. Which is why, you know, Netflix. Um, tips and advice, use Google Drive. I like it, or use Notion. I just like all stuff. The basic rule of thumb is all things in one place. What's the best system? The system you use. Not the system that's on YouTube or on a book or blah, blah, blah. It's the system that you use. So if you like to just write a list on a pad of paper, cool, if you use that every day. Um, diarize and systematize. Stick a repeating event in your calendar because the chances are like you'll have what I call time drift because your friend or your partner or whatever, someone go, oh, do you wanna go out tonight? Just get into the habit of like having a very loose calendar. Just to go, oh, like, I can't, or I've got to move that somewhere else. Um, most importantly, accept applications will fail. Do not internalize rejection. I would say rough average, one out of six. That's my kind of rule of thumb with it. Um, if you're not getting one out of six, something's wrong for me. Um, you should be getting an interview, an online test. If you're applying for like two, three weeks and you're not getting an online test, return and review. Does that make sense? Magic. Um, some companies say they sponsor and they don't. Why is that? A company's racist. Do they just hate um, foreign people? No, they just, if it says, do you have the right to work to you in the UK? The answer is no. The graduate route does not. So just to kind of explain the graduate route, will the graduate route give you the right to work in the UK for the full duration of that contract? I.e., if it's a three-year training program, then no. If it's a two-year training program, then maybe. If it's a one-year training program, then probably yes, yeah? Um, why do companies say they sponsor and they don't? Um, so every April, companies get, get what's called a COS cost allocation, certificate of sponsorship allocation. They have a hundred certificates of sponsorship, say for a large company. Um, if you apply in May, they may have a hundred. If you apply in the following March, they may have two. And also they have to allocate those golden tickets to certain roles. They might say, well, look, we'll just give them to directors. We'll just give them to graduates. That's why companies do that. Just to explain that to you. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, people get weird about it. Um, keep on top of new vacancies each week, 30 minutes a week. I'll show you how to do that. It's probably not even 30 minutes. Recency is best. Um, I never suggest all the jobs that I send to, I mean, what, I have like three, three clients on my books at the minute. Um, I never send them jobs that are more than seven days old, never. If a job is older than 30 days, don't bother. Unless it's a grad scheme, because they're big and they do multiple tranches of applications. Um, these are not hard and fast rules, but again, I'm trying to minimize wastage. Time wastage equals frustration equals, oh my God, why does no one want to give me a job? I'm a terrible person. You know, all that shame, guilt, remorse, you know, just smashes your self-esteem, right? Anybody, not you, we'll do that to anybody.